rookie report. Now, listen, for NBA rookie report, what we're going to do, we're going to give a grade for each player drafted in the lottery. Then after we go through the first 14 picks, we're going to name a player that we feel deserves a lot of recognition that didn't go in the lottery, but is playing very, very well. So first pick, Paolo Boncaro. What grade are you giving him? I'll start with you, John. Nice dead silence. I'm going to give Paolo Bancaro a B because the first two, three months of the season were pretty good. A awesome. B is so fucking foul, John. He's a but rookie. Couple, oh, yeah, but the last couple of months, his efficiency has taken a pretty steady dip, and it reminds me a little bit of Anthony Edwards' rookie season where Edwards had a slow start but a killer second half. And I feel like with Paulo, it's a matter of really developing the jump shot. And so far this year, that's been the biggest issue with his lack of consistency, to speak. He is 19 years old, but I'm going to give Paulo a B, personally. And defensively, it's another thing as well. He hasn't quite been as impactful as he will be long-term. And before you go, Drew, shout-out to OG Chilltown Hoops. Of course. Of Just course, poking my head in to save us up. Thumbs up. Shout-out to OG. Definitely got to have him on the show. Shout-out OG. I'm giving Very the side side Let's be clear. Who? I'm giving the Paulo Bancaro pick an A. But for his rookie season, the rookie report, we're going to give him a B. For his rookie season, I'm not giving him an A+. Plus. I'm not giving him an A. But still, I feel like he deserves an A. He gets an A-. minus For the last 15 games, you're spitting. He's been super inefficient. Last 15 games, he's shooting around 40% from the field. It's not been ideal. Of course, the volume's there. So his points per game, he's still the league leader in those 15 games. And that's with Jalen Williams, who recently has been unbelievable still in those 15 games. Paolo Boncaro is still the, le the league leader for rookies. I'm going to give him an A minus for the fact that there's still a ton of responsibility being put on him. And even still where we still have seen him struggle of recent, it's all right to make mistakes as a rookie. And it's all right if your game's not as polished as it needs to be. But what he has shown you early on in his career is only something that a select few basketball players in NBA history have done. It's you have Luka Doncic, you have LeBron James, and Paul Mbokero for most points averaged as a rookie. That's how great he has Zion? been. Was Zion up there? Or no? Zion didn't play enough games to qualify. But at the same time, yes, John, I understand what you mean. Yes, his defense could be a little bit better. Yes, he could be a little bit more efficient. But as a rookie, for the situation that he's in, I can still acknowledge that he's playing very great basketball for a rookie. So I'm giving him an A minus, but an A plus number one overall selection. Um, for me, Paolo's case is pretty simple. I give him a B plus because he's one of the worst volume shooters in the NBA. Granted, okay. he is a rookie, but you got to look at the efficiency. You got to look at you got to look at it like, damn, he's he's just especially this year, 2023. You know, he started off the year hot, but you got to remember rookies. There is no tape out on them. So he came out fuming. There is no tape. Now the tape is adjusted. He's one of the worst volume shooters in the NBA. And that's a fact. It's not it's nothing wrong with it. You know, he's a rookie. But I do. You can't get an A for me if you are one of the worst. If he was maybe middle of the pack, I could have maybe bumped it up for an A. But him being bottom of the bottom keeps him at a B plus for me. Mr. Dells. Sorry, my, uh, my internet was lagging. I gave him an A. Listen, I get the efficiency. I understand it, especially from three. It's ugly 28% free throw, 74%. You probably want to see that even a little bit more, too. But, I mean, if he's not an A, I don't know what other rookie you're going to be giving to an A. He's the 19 years old. He's the main scoring option on the Magic team who, understand in 2023, maybe he's not shooting efficiently, efficiently, but they've been winning more games than they have been the last couple of seasons, right? I know – Six Markel Man Show has been Falls. talking about, huh? Markel Fultz. For sure, it's not he's just Paolo, but he's he's the number one scoring option. And if it wasn't for him, they wouldn't be winning these games. So I, I think his case is pretty settled. He's the favorite for rookie of the year. He should be. It's an A plus draft pick, like you guys mentioned. The Magic were kind of toying with us during draft season with a couple of guys that settled on Paolo. He's by far the best rookie this season. The efficiency is going to come. I, I don't doubt that. I mean, he's a natural scorer. He has a natural stroke. He can find his spots. So, you, you know, I'm, I'm excited for his future. Let me, let me interrupt real quick. Is he by far the best rookie this season? No. Uh, no, but I think he's comfortably. He's In the, the second half of the season, he hasn't been the best rookie. By he's far, I would push back because that boy, Jalen Williams, is crazy. He's a dog, too, for sure. Paulo's the best rookie, but he's not the most impactful. 
Who's the most impactful, John? Walker Kessler. We'll talk about him, champ. We'll talk about <laughs> him. All right. And I want to uh, that crazy. Paul is also shooting 36% from mid range as well, where teams have dripped off him a little bit too. So that's one thing I've noticed with his game. He can hit the mid range, but it's a matter of mass producing that. Paulo went on, a, went on a stretch where he hit like a three in 25 attempts. Yeah, no, yeah. he's he, he, he had a stretch of like last month where he was like, now, oh, three, these, oh, four, four, four. I feel like. Every pick for me will be graded on a different scale because there's different expectations for somebody that goes 13th versus somebody that goes number one. Paolo was the first overall pick. When you're the first overall pick, you are supposed to be a franchise changer. Granted, it's not supposed to happen immediately, although we've seen first overall picks do it immediately. Given the expectation, Paolo, if you tell me in the first half of the season, A+, plus, okay, no doubt. February was rough. February was bad. Second half of the year was, uh, are, are we sure this guy is by far the best guy? Are we sure that he deserves the hype we're giving him in the first half of the season? I think those questions start to come up. He can't shoot at all. Three-point shot, mid-range, he can't shoot at all. I'm going to give him uh, an A, and I'm not giving him an A+, plus because his efficiency has been horrible, but I give him an A. I think he's still been good, and when the Magic have been healthy, they have been winning games especially when Markel Fultz has come back into the lineup. So I'm giving this pick an A, but I don't think that the hype that was on him early on in the season uh, should still stand. I think that it's pretty clear that, you know, he's going to be a great player, but I don't know if it's what people are making or not to be like, you know, LeBron-like, where nice. his, his stats were ridiculous to start the year. Number two, Chet Holmgren. And A, because he was injured. So we're going to skip that and go to the third overall pick, which is Jabari Smith. You know, I'm going to be honest. I gave Jabari Smith a D. Oh. And if it, was, if it wasn't for his, his latest performance where against, against the, the Pacers, Pacers uh, it would have been an F. But that brought it up to a D. I think Jabari Smith has just been a horrible shooter. He's supposed to be a three-point shooter, and he's shooting 29% from three and 34% on wide-open field goals. So Jabari Smith just hasn't been impactful. He's been an okay defender, good sometimes, but I, I don't know how you can give this guy anything higher than a D, given he's the third overall pick in the draft. Um, I, I would have gave him an F, but then I, I doubled down, and I thought about the situation. I thought about the coaching, and I thought about how he doesn't have a real point guard next to him. So I, I'm, I am going to take that into account and be like, that helps for a big man like him, a guy who's a good pick-and-popper. Um, so I'll give him a D because he has been a terrible shooter. You know, offensively, he has been able to get it going. His handle is very, very, very – kind of the same things we were saying coming out of college. You know, he was shooting out of wacky shots in college, shots that weren't going to translate. And then you can see that now in the league. He hasn't been translating the shooting. The handle hasn't translated at all. Um, defensively, he's okay at times. He has shown – spurts where he can be a good defender but he cannot defend the perimeter he cannot defend guards he cannot defend in switches so um, for me i'll give him a d minus if you can even get that he gets that it's it's hard for me to to evaluate someone's defense i i get where you're coming from because we've seen these forwards come into the league and have defensive versatility be able to defend against bigs be able to stretch out get on the perimeter defend some of these faster quicker guards of course, the first one that comes to mind is Evan Mobley, but I feel like that's tough because not everyone comes in and is just – like those are the freak athletes, in well, my well, opinion. not a freak athlete. Is he – all right, listen, call me a casual. Is he defending on the perimeter like an Evan Mobley? No, nobody is. That's, he's, that's Evan Mobley is like, the generation player. Exact, actually, absolutely. But on the perimeter, it's you need to be agile. You need to be quick, and especially with these twitchy guards. It's hard to be consistently – Con consistently sound on the perimeter. Now, it's tough in Jabari's situation because obviously you're drafted number three overall, but there's just so much development and so much lack of continuity with the Rockets too that it's hard for me to be blatant, give him an F, give him a D. I can't give him anything higher than a, a C, C minus, but it's hard to truly evaluate Jabari's situation because you have Jalen Green, and that's who it seems the Rockets want to be the their primary focus as of right now before this new draft, whether Scoot comes in, whether they get Victor. That'll be a different story. But right now, Jalen Green seems to be that priority. And then suddenly now you have Alperin Shangun who, who showed that he could be 
a, a versatile offensive player. He can play make a bit. He can he can he can be a force down low. That more more importantly, his playmaking abilities as a big man. And then you have KPJ, who also is someone that needs the ball in their hands. Riv is is one hundred percent right. He's not a true point guard. So then you have Jabari, who's now the fourth in this mix as a rookie. Yes, his shooting has not been good. You wanted to at least see some kind of flash there. It has not been good. It hasn't been consistent, Not at least not up until this point. So, yes, I understand where the criticism stem from, but I find in his position specifically, it's hard for him to, con- to get some type of continuity going. So I give him a C- minus due to situation, but you guys are more than valid to give him the harsh critiques. But I believe that I'm going to be a little bit more lenient because – Houston right now is a mess and it's a joke. So I was a little bit harder on Paulo giving him a B. So I'm going to give Jabari a D himself on the season. He's shooting 30% from three. And that was supposed to be the trait early on. Now we could also acknowledge one thing is that the Rockets are a fucking joke. They don't have a head coach. They don't have a point guard. And most of their young players are playing out of position. Their point guard and Kevin Porter Jr. is not a point. And so when I look at Jabari, no one's setting him up. He has no sets running for him. And when you look at the lack of structure in Houston, it's setting up all of their young players to fail because you need to have veterans, you need to have mentors, but you also have to have a coach that knows how to use you properly. And for Smith defensively, it's been there this season. He's been quality, but when you don't have many of the defensive personnel or any veterans holding you accountable on that side of the ball, it's tougher to night in and night out bring that level of engagement. Now, offensively, shooting 37% from mid-range, that's the next step in his game because last night he had 30 points versus the Pacers. You see with a guy at six foot 11 that can shoot, it's a matter of taking off the dribble attack and closeouts. And as one of the more, he's pretty young for a 19 year old. He's not going to turn 20 until May. It's just a matter of seeing those necessary building blocks, passing, taking off the dribble, defensively switching, and also getting that confidence back from three point. I don't know if you guys saw this, but in high school, Jabari was a very streaky shooter then, too. He shot 32% in his sophomore year from three, then 38% in his junior year, and 41% in his senior season. So he's never the most consistent per se, but he did grow and develop. I think long term, his development is going to be similar to Jaron Jackson, where in year one, it's mostly just seeing some of the defensive versatility, and he wants a three point shoot and then take a step forward. And I have no doubt it will once they find a head coach and hopefully a real point guard. I know the, the number three. Oh, so- sorry. Sorry, but I know the Rockets are a joke, but Jabari's missing wide open shots. He is. You know, like the shots I not think, falling is 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 alarming. I understand. Like, I don't like. I understand it's a bad situation, but Jabari is it gets left open. He does. And he just doesn't make it. And they also don't pass to him when he's open as well, and that hurts your rhythm, hurts your confidence. Your teammates have to make those necessary passes to you, and as a shooter. That'll mess with your mental big time. And I think like if you're the Rockets, your primary focus should be Jalen Green, Jabari Smith. That's it right uh, now in development. Alperin Shangun, then Jalen Green. I understand what you're saying. No doubt. Alperin definitely has been a a pleasant surprise for the Rockets. I get where you're coming from. But you use such high draft capital on Jabari. You feel like you don't want to mess him up more, more importantly, in my opinion. The potential with Jabari should be higher than what than what it is for Alperen Sengun. And although Alperen Sengun has been better, simply, he's been better, you understand. You use the number three overall pick. You don't want to mess up on that one. That's fair. I don't want to give him a D or an F. He's number three overall pick. If you want to take that into account heavily, I can understand maybe the lower grade. Um, I think he's shown more flashes than maybe you guys are giving credit for, especially defensively, averaging seven rebounds, a block game on a Houston team that nobody plays defense. So the fact that we could even talk about him maybe being above average defender, I think we should give him even more credit than just being above average defender. Not that he's a leader or anything by any means, but the fact that the pieces around him really don't show any effort. And it seems like the coaching staff has no real idea of how to play defense or like you guys mentioned, be a leader for this extremely young team. He's been put in a pretty difficult spot offensively it's pretty gross i mean he's shooting 39 percent from the field it it's that's pretty ugly no matter what position you play the fact that he's a big man makes it even worse um but i think i'd give him probably a d plus if i'm feeling good maybe a c minus i think there's some flashes there i think there's something if you're a rockets fan you could be excited for 
Um, but I don't think you're looking at him since he is the number three overall pick. You were probably expecting him year one to be more efficient and have a bigger impact, even though we knew this Rockets team wasn't going to go anywhere. Next pick. This is my favorite player in this draft. The fourth overall pick, Keegan Murray, a guy that everybody said was going to be a bad pick because they, you know, the Kings pass on Jaden Ivey. Keegan Murray has been one of the best rookies this year, top five for sure. And I think what's most impressive is that, you know, fine. You know, Keegan Murray could have went to a team like the Pistons and averaged 16, 18 points per game. But instead, he's playing on the second seed in the West. He's averaging 12 points. He's shooting 40% plus from three. And he's playing very good defense night in the night out. And he's been a much improved rebounder throughout the season. This pick is no doubt to me right now an A-plus pick because wow. he fits exactly what Sabonis and Fox need to complement them as players. I think Monte, Monte Morris nailed this pick out of the park. Keegan Murray yeah. is an awesome player. And, yeah, he's an older pros- prospect, but I believe that there's more to Keegan Murray's game than just being a spot-up shooter. I think that eventually he will be more comfortable putting the ball on the floor and creating his own shot. We've seen he did that in Iowa. So I think that he can develop into somebody that can be a go-to option on a team that is pretty good. Not the number one. I think within the top three options, he could definitely be that. And I think his ceiling is somewhere averaging between 18 to 22 points per game. I I don't see why he can't do that. Even if he's an older rookie, he's already showing flashes. He's efficient on a winning team, and he hits big-time shots, and he's a big-time player. So Keegan's the most NBA-ready rookie, but you're looking at him with some rose-colored glasses. Give him an A-plus, bro. Why is he not an A-plus this year? defensively he has not been that good enough to warrant it and while he's been an amazing shooter he's not doing that much on the ball i think to warrant that just yet but they don't need him to be on the ball like that yeah i mean is he not a plus john doesn't have to warrant something pretty insane john no it doesn't i mean shooting 40 something percent from three is pretty insane as a rookie that's insane I mean, for the pick, for example, John, let me ask you, because now you're really just being disrespectful to Keegan Murray. (laughs) (laughs) Let me ask you something, John. What did the Kings need Keegan Murray to do? Movement, shooting, playing off the ball, and he's been excellent in that role. Okay, he's been what? A-plus in those roles? A-plus, my friend. So so the roles... clear cut rookie of the year. No, it's he not. not it's for, it's it, for the A it plus is for the fit. It's your team. I, I, it's John, your team I understand fit. what are you supposed to do from. for the team? Top five pick. Yeah, that's an also another point. He's been a he top five pick, and he's he's lived up to all that. He's shooting forty mm-hmm. percent from three. He's def- he defends well, and he is quite literally doing everything Sacramento needs him to do for the team. Think that's why he does John, all those things. I think John is pushing back because you said. The, the all the creation now uh, he can be like the the advancement in his game and John he doesn't need to yeah, but John said all John said was he hasn't shown that in his game to warrant that he's been an A plus pick for the Kings I mean the Kings the, yeah. the Kings made this pick the Kings needed him to fulfill a role he's fulfilled that role at an A plus level I agree I don't think anybody else could have done it you know I think he definitely he, I, he gets an A for me I think he coming in he was able to fit right next to Sabonis right next to Fox he was able to plug in you know, like you, like John mentioned, he was the most NBA ready prospect. You know, three year player. You know, he's very well polished coming out. So him being a good shooter defensively, I mean, he the attempt is there. So it's like you see, he works hard. He tries. It's just he's not that good yet. Yeah, that's fine. You can work on that offensively. Like John mentioned, I don't think he's shown enough on ball, but he doesn't need to. You know, they got Fox, they got Herder, they got Monk, they got Sabonis. So he doesn't really need to do that at the moment. So he hasn't shown a lot of flashes, but as a shooter. He's been pretty much damn near elite as a rookie, you know, like, and this, it's going to be tough because this is kind of like high, high. So some people like it, it, there's no high you can get as a shooter from this. He's pretty much at an elite clip. But what he's done for them, them to be a number two seed. Yeah, I get mad. Now, let's go on to the fifth overall pick. It's Jaden Ivey. Mr. Ivey. Now, the first guy that's going to go first is Riv to talk about Jaden Ivey. So what, <laughs> what grade are you giving Jaden Ivey? Oh, he gets a B plus A, you know, I, okay, I, because, um, you know, Jaden Ivey is a funny guy. Um, I picked him to win rookie of the year, but that was just me being a fan. You know, I love Jaden Ivey's game. He's so great for me. But um, just his month by month improvement, you know, as a playmaker, 
as because coming into the season, he wasn't going to play point guard. You know, he was supposed to play off the ball. Cade was going to be the one. You know, they're going to try to, you know, sample that, experiment with that. And I think, you know, that was his role coming in. He thought he was going to do that. Cade goes down with an injury. They experiment with Killian a little bit. But then they're just like, fuck it. Jaden Ivey, you're going to play point guard and you're going to learn how to play point guard. Ever since then, I mean, this guy, in terms of his poise to the game, in terms of him and his approach, you know, the way he's been able been able to penetrate defenses, the way he's been able to see defenses, you know, communicate with his teammates and just pick apart defenses. I think the improvement month by month, week by week, game by game, has been probably one of the most underrated improvements in the game. I think him, he has improved the most out of all the rookies. He just hasn't had the best, you know, he hasn't had the best allies. I mean, Keegan's one of the best on the number two uh, team. Paolo had the early start, historical start. Jay Nivey doesn't have those two things, but what he does have is he has that steady improvement in his game. I mean, defensively, statistically, he's not one of the best defenders in the league, but as a rookie, he's tasked with guarding, you know, the tougher guards, and that guard position is the toughest in the league. But Jay Nivey, man, I mean, like, for me, B plus A, because he didn't start off strong. He still struggles as a shooter, but in terms of penetrating the basket, that floater, get into the basket, you know, his ability to penetrate for his teammates. I mean, his, his connection with Duran is I love it. You know, I can't wait to see it. Wiseman has got there. He's played well. That connection has been there. And I'm just happy for Jay Nivey that he continues to improve. So, for me, I give him a B plus, A minus, definitely. For me, Jay Nivey gets a B, B plus. I can't give him that A for the sole fact that he's been inefficient really all season. And even this last month where he's really showed a lot more as a playmaker – which is what I've been most pleased about with this game and why I'm giving him such a, a, a solid grade is really that his playmaking has taken a step up, especially on a Pistons team that is not that good, that is not full of a lot of talent. Riv mentioned it a little bit, his connection with Duran solid. Wiseman's come in, he's given them some positive minutes. But really what stands out is that he came in and he was supposed to be a tweener. He was supposed to be that point guard, shooting guard. You don't really know what he is. He's more so a scorer than he is a passer. But really what he's done and he's maximized his opportunity now. And I, I want to carefully word this. And I don't want to say it's a good thing that Cade Cunningham got hurt because that's obviously not a benefit for the game at all. But in this sense, Cade Cunningham getting injured allowed Jaden Ivey to, to be forced into playing the point guard because the ball was consistently going to be put into his hands it was going to consistently be put on him to facilitate this offense. And he could have done one of two things. He could have taken that and he could have crumbled. He could have shown that he's not really a point guard. He's really primarily a scorer. He could have done that. But really what he's done is a great job of incorporating his teammates and trying to get them involved. The Pistons aren't good. They still have their ways to go, no doubt about it. But what one thing you can take away from it is that next season you have your point guard, and that's Jaden Ivey. Next season, you have your shooting guard, small forward, because of his height, because of that versatility that he gives you, that's Cade Cunningham. You don't have to force Cade Cunningham to be the point guard if he doesn't want to. You can primarily have him be that scorer. And right now where it's stemming, where it's, excuse me, right now where it's heading towards is that the Pistons will have a high draft pick because they are one of the worst teams in the league. If you bring in Victor Wembanyama, of course, that's an automatic bonus. This team definitely becomes exciting. Scoot now becomes one of those players. Do you go Scoot or do you go Brandon Miller? We had this conversation in our group chat. I, before listening to you guys, was under the impression that, hey, you just automatically go to Scoot, you go best available. But really because of Ivy and his ability to play the point guard, now there comes flexibility. And now you can go with a Brandon Miller who, hey, it's not insane to say that he could be better than Scoot because of the show that Brandon Miller has put on this season at Alabama. So now you have your point guard in Jay Nivey, your two in Cade Cunningham, and now your three in Brandon Miller. That, now you actually have a foundation that you can continue to build off of. So for Jay Nivey, he's done a great job. For me, I'm going to stick around to BB+. Plus. Yeah, and no, uh, sorry, just quickly want to jump in to piggyback off that. I, I, I've seen a lot of Pistons fans, you know, you know, you get Scoop, figure it out, get Scoop, figure it out. You know, he's generation. And I listen, I get it, you know, like – People assume it's the choosing Ivy over Scoot thing, but what people got to understand is you got to watch Brandon Miller. And then what you got to really do is you got to sit here and look at Cade. Like, you bring in Scoot, you are now putting three guys that are basically guards and you're making them share the ball with each other. Why would you want that? 
Brandon Miller can play off the ball. He can play all ball. He's the best shooter out of all four of them. He can space the floor. He can be a great open look guy for Cade to penetrate the basket, for Ivy to penetrate the basket. I just think, like, when you look at Cade and you look at Ivy and you look at Ivy's improvement, yes, Scoop could probably end up being better down the road than Ivy, but I think a trio of Ivy, Cade, and Miller could be really, really special, and that's a big trio. So it's like that. that's like a, a small trio with Scoot, Ivy, Cade. You, now you're force feeding, you're forcing Cade to play the three. I don't really want to do that. That's just my opinion on it. Yeah, Brandon Miller would be the pick. He's been the best player in college this year. I think in A for Jane Ivy's rich because defensively, while he is a rookie, he hasn't been good. He struggled off ball. And he's still learning. I have to give him credit, though, because the Pistons are just throwing him out to the walls this year without Cade. And he was a shooting guard coming in, and we've seen that playmaking growth. He's getting the foul line five times a game. Now the efficiency isn't quite there from the field at 41%, but it's been a learning process. He struggled, but he's shown some amazing highlights, amazing like signs of growth throughout this year, as you talked about, Riff, getting better and better. And if this helps him get Victor Wimbanyama, let's say, in the draft, him getting these growing pains out early, I think are going to pay off big time for Detroit. So what was, what was your grade for him, John? Uh, that's a good point. I'm going to give him a B minus. B minus. Okay. okay. I was curious. You give him an A. <laughs> um, I, that's a good nice point. Grade. That shit is funny. <laughs> I think uh, I gave Ivy an A. I mean, I think a lot of this has to do with situation. We talked about it with Jabari Smith, um, you know, being on the Rockets. And Ivy is basically in the same position. He's on a Detroit Pistons team who sucks, who doesn't play defense. I mean, there's there's not a bunch of things you could look for at this at this Pistons team. You got guys like Duran and Ivy and Wiseman's had some moments here and there for them, but even still trade deadline pickup. But overall this is this is not a good team. So the fact that Kate Cunningham goes down and I mean that is your prime enjoy number one overall pick. Ivy steps in. He's the primary ball handler, the facilitator of this offense. And you weren't expecting that. Ivy was not coming into this year expecting to be the guy to run point, to be the main facilitator of this team. And he's come in and he's done a pretty good job. I mean, averaging 15, 5, and 4. The one area you would like to see him improve is turnovers. He's averaging three turnovers per game. But again, since this is a bit of an unexpected situation for him, I do want to cut him some slack there. He isn't the most efficient, like Drew mentioned as well, but I think he puts pressure on the rim really well. He was averaging six points per drive. Last time I, uh, I saw a stat about two weeks ago, six points per drive, which was the tops amongst all rookies. Um, but he has improved as a player. Maker. He's averaging, excuse me, in his last three games, last six games, he has three games of 10 or more assists. So you can see his improvement month to month. Um, I think overall, you have to be happy with him for the situation he was put into. And then next year, as you guys mentioned with their future draft picks, um, you know, probably getting top five, top four pick if they could get a guy to compliment IV and Cade. That does seem like the best situation rather than going with someone like Scoot, who might be the best overall player available. So for me, I'm giving Jaden Ivey a B. I think that early in the season, he wasn't the most efficient. I think really in the last 20 games, he's picked it up. He's averaging 16 and 6 in his last 20 games. He's been a better playmaker. He's been all around just more efficient. So that's why I'm giving him a B. Obviously, circumstance, situation matters. And Cade going down has allowed him to handle the ball even more. The Pistons are a team that I think they've taken a lot of calculated risk. Jaden Ivey was a good player to fit alongside Cade Cunningham. You traded for James Wiseman, and James Wiseman's points have went up, and Jaden Ivey and him have built a connection early on already. They have Jalen Duren, which I thought was a great pick. There's a lot of good talent, and I think Troy Weaver is taking good risks and, and betting on guys' upside. Trading Sadiq Bey for James Wiseman was a good move. Sadiq Bey is, I don't think, not a positive, impactful player. And James Wiseman, at least now, he's showing some of the potential that we all thought he would flash consistently in Golden State in Detroit. But I'm giving Jaden Ivey a B.